Hi, my name is Joe Fanari. I'm here at Fear of Fame Studios. We have a film festival that we do here in Tampa, Florida called the Fear of Fame Film Festival, which is an international film festival. And a lot of people are struggling sending me DCP files for their films to be shown at the theater. This, I feel like every editor should know how to make a DCP in some way. I'm going to show you the most simplest way possible. There's other advanced ways, especially if you're trying to do an actual premiere for your film. That would be maybe a little bit different. You may want to do a little bit more with it to make sure it's the best it can be. But this will be film festival ready, very simple, straightforward, straight to the chase. First, you're going to go to dcpomatic.com. You're going to see all the different options from Windows, Macs, whatever you use on your system. So, for example, if I'm using a Mac, I can click on this, DCP Omatic. It'll pop up and it's going to basically give you an option. You can just download it right away. If you click on it, regular player. Okay, basically, yeah, if you click on it, it's just going to download it automatically. Once DCP Omatic is downloaded, you'll see something like this. Now, don't be scared. It's very, very simple and there's only a few steps that you need to do. First, you're going to click on the file and then you're going to click on new. You're going to name your DCP, whatever it is. For example, I'm going to do this for a buddy of mine, uh, her film called Influencer. Save it to where you're going to find it easily. Right now, I'm just going to, purpose of this, I will just submit it to my desktop. Usually, you want to save to something that's bigger. So if you have like a hard drive, definitely we want to put it onto that. Something that's going to take up a lot of space because the DCPs do take a lot of storage. This is a short film, so it shouldn't really take that much. Okay, so now we have it here. You're going to click on Add Files. You're going to locate where your film is. Uh, like I said, it's got to scroll through really quick. And here it is. It's an MLV file. Should pop up. You should be able to hit the play button. Make sure it plays. Cool. cool. It plays. So now what you have to do next is you have to make sure that you click on Fit DCP. 709 is usually what people color grade in. If you color grade in any other, I'm sure you select those, but usually most people, especially with their films that they submit to festivals, usually just a rec 709 color space, so that is totally fine. If you play a little bit and you want to make sure, see how there's extra bars around here on the sides, top sides. So you want to crop it so you make sure it fills it. You could try two things. You could first go to DCP and you could see if it needs to be a flat or a scope. It really doesn't matter with theater C. If I click on scope, it gives it more bars. So you don't want that. You want it to fill the screen. So obviously, you would choose flat. Uh, from here, you choose your audio language. Make sure you click that. English. This is a short film. So choose short. If it's a feature, trailer, whatever it is, you select that. And then we're going to go back to our content. And we're going to crop it so it fills everything. Usually, I do it from the top and bottom. I'll split it out a little bit. I'll try this five on each side. See how much more I need to do. Maybe 10 on each side. Probably a little bit more. 15. 15. Still needs a little bit more space. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you crop it as best as you can. Certain films should cover the whole screen. The goal is to cover everything so you don't really have anything. If you have a little black on top bottom and it's just not cropping properly, you're probably going to have that in the theater. It may show a little black on top and the bottom. If it's not balanced out right, that all depends how you export your film. Everybody does their film differently. So unfortunately, that's kind of like how the best this is going to be. A little on top, a little bit on bottom. Um, but the film's there. You want to click on your audio tab. If you do your audio the proper way you do pans and you do different type of mixing, you're going to have options. It's going to be a lot bigger. It's going to go across. But for this, is just a basic stereo output, left and right. Uh, you would then show graph. It'll calculate and it'll analyze the audio. So what it'll do is going to analyze the audio, make sure the audio is up to par. Usually what they tell you to do is when you read the graph, if it's too high, they want you to lower the decibel. Usually... That's the case, but if you feel like that you mix the audio the way that's intended to be, then you can just leave it as is. Sometimes I notice that when I've edited something to be and I dropped it down a couple of decibels, it does get too low. And then when you play in the theater, it's, it sounds too low. Uh, but in general, you kind of want it to be cleaner and you want it to have a steady audio path. 
the timer right here will show how long it's analyzing. So you can see right in the bottom of your screen, it's analyzing right there. It'll show how many seconds is left. So I was going to jump to once it's analyzed it's complete. Now it says analyze audio. So when you show your graph, this is what I'm talking about. Usually they want you to lower it so you don't see any of the red. So if you use your decibel and you drop it down, you keep going down until the red goes away. So this is negative four. The issue with this, it's supposed to be a lot cleaner. This is how it should be when you present it in the theater. But sometimes if you have somebody who really mastered your audio, you really don't want to kind of mess with it. So you kind of leave it as is. So for the purpose of the festival, I leave it as is so people can deliver their film as intended. And that will put me back in red when it's zero decibel. Before you make your DCP, you want to go back into your DCP tab and you're going to see something that says resolution, frame rates, 2K is usually fine. Even if it's a 1080p file, 2K you would still do it in. Even if you had a 4K file or an 8K file, whatever it is, you could still choose 2K, especially if you're just doing a film festival. Not every theater even has 4K capability still. Most of them are now just about to do, but for saving storage space, 2K is perfectly fine, especially for a festival. So I would keep it at 2K. Your frame rate is very important. You'll see 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, 60, etc. It all depends on the frame rate of your project. But 24 frames is key. So if you have a film, you should export it out in 24 frames a second, especially if you can for theater purposes. So you may have to make another copy of your film just for theater purposes of 24 frames a second because most theaters don't play anything past 30. A lot of theaters don't even take 30. So we usually want the projectors to be able to raise the frame rates in between 24 25 frames per second. If it's 25, it pops up 25. I usually bring it back down to 24. 24 is definitely the smoothest. So you want to make sure that you select frame rate of 24. Now, the last part, all you have to do, click on jobs, and I'll say make DCP. A little hints if it comes up with any type of errors. Like I said, this has come up that the audio level is very high on the left and right. You should reduce the gain of your audio content, which is ideal and you should do it. But sometimes if you feel like that the audio was perfect in the way that you intended it and you liked how the audio sounded and you really don't want to mess with the lowness of it, you can kind of leave it as is. It's not that big of a deal. I will click on make DCP. And now it's going to take its time and it's really going to create the DCP. It's going to encode it first and then it'll show you how long it's going to take to actually make. Once it's done, it'll say complete and your DCP is basically ready to go. So when it's complete, you'll see Transcode and Influencer OK ran for duration, how long it took. It took 28 minutes because it was a short film. Feature films can take a lot longer. Once it's complete, you'll see a folder basically laid out just like this. What you want to make sure it has is this folder right here. It's going to have these six items in it. The J2C, which is the video file, the audio file. Make sure it's all like this, your asset file. This is, if it looks like this, this is usually good. So the best way to do it is just get double check with everything. So if I wanted to, I can just literally take this. We can remove it for now. Add DCP. We'll look for the file where it created it. So we'll scroll through, try to find where it made it. Influencer. This folder right here, SMPTE. See how it shows all these six files. Click open. Now it should say OK Ran. You can then hit play. Tonight at 7 p.m. And you can see that it plays. So you know that your DCP is done correctly. And that's basically all you have to do. And then when you upload it to either Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever big file service that you have, you would just do that. But that's going to take you probably a few hours. It's going to take a very, very long time to upload those files. And they're going to be a big file. This was around 14 gigs. So yes, so that takes up some space. And yeah, your DCP is done once you upload it to your drive and then you set it to the festival and you're all set to go.